clinics. So pop up clinics, they'll literally come to. They'll be in any community community centers and etc. And what I was seeing at the beginning and still to this day was really bad in terms of long lineups and etc. Like I was just reading a story about there was one in Scarborough, and there were people started lining up like at midnight so that they could get it so that they could get so once you get to these once you line up in these uh pop-up clinics or whatever in these lines you get like a there, there's a certain amount of tickets that they give out and that's basically giving you like a same day appointment so you come back then boom for your same day appointment then you get vaccinated or whatever but for the one in scarborough like i think they wrapped around a full-size football field like like five times people are lining up starting at midnight and by 5 30 a.m it was already packed like completely packed and and the messaging or at least the communication into how to get information about this really there was no real centralized system of communication it was all over the place people were getting information from social media and one of the big the uh, let's say not really organizations but accounts that came out to help people was vaccine hunters canada which you and i talked about like right now they're getting a lot a lot of praise and people that are getting vaccine vaccinated are making sure to post their vaccine pictures we're saying got vaccinated thanks to vaccine hunters canada they add them on twitter or whatever but the fact that we needed a thing like vaccine hunters to have a clear concise place where people could get their information on pop-up clinics was a huge problem to be is a problem to begin with because it kind of showed that we did not have at least at our city level here in toronto we did not have the infrastructure to host um to host all this type of information to have a centralized system where we could diffuse that information so is it kind of seemed like it, it I, for for a lack of a better word it was very the way we went about handling uh the vaccine distribution in toronto was very ghetto in a sense like it just it wasn't you would think that at the municipal level we would we'd be doing a way better job and eventually the the toronto government ended up uh partnering up with uh, vaccine hunters and so it makes it kind of easier for vaccine hunters to get the up-to-date information so vaccine hunters basically they they know exactly well they get to know how many vaccines are left at a certain pop-up clinic then they push people towards coming to that clinic if it's full then they kind of save people a lot of time from having to actually go to that clinic but i remember a reporter asked john tory he's like yeah what does this uh, mean at least for our capabilities at the municipal level that you as a uh you have to partner up with a twitter account and shout out to everybody that does vaccine hunters it's like it's a bunch of tech guys from toronto and i believe also waterloo which is like toronto waterloo is kind of our own silicon valley which nobody re ever talks about but that's we have our own say silicon valley the toronto waterloo area but yeah big shout out to those tech guys that did that but john tory ended up answering that question by saying i don't think that's how we need to see to see this we need to see it more as they are doing the work that we also want to do so we might as well partner up because we we're both doing the same work we both have the same goal and yes this that question is right but i'm sorry like it's it's also there's another side to it where it really shows our ineptitude or the ineptitude of of the municipal government and i think that need really needed to be pointed out yeah, well, the vaccine thing in, in Canada, you know, just the delivery, the supply, and as you address the demand, you know, it's just, it's, it hasn't been ideal, you know, and uh, for, for understand, understandable reasons, um, you know, as you talked about, just like, I think this, this is, was an interesting uh, side of the problem, talking about like the organization, uh uh, in order to like vaccinate people like how like how be, like uh the our organization wasn't up to task but also just the supply man the supply wasn't there you know at the end of the day if you don't have many vaccines you're gonna have long lines you know if you don't have like if the supply is not high enough you know you're going to be in this situation and like one of the reasons why the supply was low is that is because First of all, like Canada is not manufacturing any of the vaccines, uh, unless I'm wrong, but I'm I would say I'm pretty certain Canada is not manufacturing any vac vaccines, and and the countries that are manufacturing those vaccines are like 
holding on to most of them, like especially in the US. Like the US has been just holding on to all the vaccines that they're manufacturing. And that's probably like 30 to 40% of the of the of the supply, you know? Um like like all their vaccines are being held on in the US. And one of the biggest issues is that uh like the I believe the AstraZeneca vaccine like Ox- AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine was is being manufactured in the US and hasn't been approved by the FDA um but has been approved in other countries including Canada I believe um it has been approved in Canada but the the US is the US government is still holding on to those uh doses you know and many of them are probably going to go bad in in a couple of months. So uh, that was one of the, one huge problem uh, to start. Like at the beginning, Joe Biden, the the president of the U- U.S., said that he was he was going to share some some vaccines with Canada and Mexico because we we're neighbors. They shared, I believe, three million doses, and then. Um, after more pressure, the administration came out and said that they were pretty much going to share the entire their entire stock of the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine, and they have upwards of sixty million doses, um, and I believe much more than probably more than sixty million. Like it's probably like in the seventy million uh, range. Uh, so they said, but they have to wait for the. Uh, for the FDA approval first before they start shipping them out because they can't ship something that hasn't been approved uh, nationally um, at like locally there. So, so, um, so one of the issues that that I was saying in Canada was just getting the supply. You know, we don't have, we're not manufacturing the manufacturing these vaccines, right? And um, like, like the current federal government the liberal government is putting the blame on the previous conservative government the harper government they're saying that because of their policies many vaccine manufacturers left the country but you know you had it's been what you had uh, what four years before covid or almost five years you know like you could have done something um yeah so like the supply is a big issue but uh but one good thing is that now canada is getting many more doses i believe like upwards of three million doses per week um and canada is vaccinating much more faster now um i have some numbers um we're we like we're recording this on sunday may may 9th um, but Canada has administered almost 16 million doses and that that means almost like 14.6 million people have received at least one dose uh, which is like around 38 percent of the of the population um, you know so and in Ontario in Ontario Ontario has administered 6 million doses um and that means 5.7 million people have received at least one dose and that's like 39 percent of of ontario ontarians which is like 46.7 percent of of uh of 16 plus people have received the 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 vaccine in in ontario so like you, you know the situation is improving in terms of like the vaccination um and I should expect the situation in in terms of also like new cases to also improve as people be, uh, are becoming fully vaccinated and acquiring the immunity because obviously you have to for most of these vaccines you have to get vaccinated you need two doses which are spaced out but also Canada is spacing out the doses for quite some time uh, and then by the after you get the second dose it takes upwards to two weeks to be fully immune so like there's a time lag in between getting the vaccines and seeing the cases fall so i think that's like the 
that's uh like if someone had to be hopeful i think someone should, like one should be hopeful about that <laughs>